you get mentioned in my name. We don't like what you say. I don't give a fuck. Y'all can suck my dick. Lesson 7. Shopify and other sales sources. As we now know, part of what it takes to succeed with a crowdfunder is to have a product that is differentiated. And on a more macro scale, having a well-differentiated product is always a good place to be. This is especially true when it comes to having other forms of a web presence. With differentiation, you have more options. On the internet, this can most often be done by having your own self-operated web store. Here you're able to tell your story in as much detail as you wish. Amazon does not lend itself well to being able to do this. The more important your story may be to the overall appeal of your product, the more important it is to have a venue in which you can tell that story. You can choose to have your own standalone website created independently and then put it out there on the internet and do your best to succeed. But having some structural help and experienced free marketing help from people who have a vested interest in your success is not a bad thing. And this is available to you when you use the Shopify platform to host your website. Their platform and software makes this much easier to do than if you were to decide to do this on your own. Many of the most successful products found on their own websites are being hosted by Shopify. If you should decide to go this route, we have people there that we can connect you with and they can see to it that you get started on the right foot. You may or may not have aspirations to place your product in bricks and mortar stores. And as much as the internet is making great strides in controlling more and more of product sales, offline stores and sources still have the biggest market share and that will continue for at least some time into the future. So if you aspire to doing this, how in the hell would you go about even beginning? We've been fortunate to learn of a new service that can help you get the attention of offline retail sources. It's called RangeMe.com. They have relationships with an ever-increasing number of bricks and mortar sources. These people are always looking for new products and they are learning that this is a good place to go to find them. This is just another example of the importance of traffic. With RangeMe, you are able to list all of the important information that a suitor would want to know about you and your product, and this is using RangeMe's templates for this purpose. The service is not only an avenue to finding your way into the bricks and mortar world, but it looks to be a good one. It strikes us that this is a much better place to be to have suitable prospects come looking for you rather than you having to chase after them. There is no such thing as too many successful sales channels for a product. And what I have provided here in the way of information about post-crowdfunding opportunities is just the view from 20,000 feet. In a separate bonus module, Adam will go into this in much greater detail. But for now, we just wanted to give you an introduction to this important next step in the life of your product and your entrepreneurial life as a business owner. So now some action steps for this module. It is extremely important that you have begun a relationship with certain critical players before you actually reach the time of needing them. These might include number one, your fulfillment house partner, number two, your freight forwarder, and number three, an expediting service if you wish to have one of those as well. Go through all of the logical, common-sense process of interviewing them. Hear of their qualifications and experience with crowdfunding, and then make an informed decision. Making the right choices here will make your crowdfunding life immeasurably easier. As for sales avenues in your life after crowdfunding, there is nothing concrete to decide here yet. But thoroughly familiarize yourself with available options and be thinking, of what may be best suited to your product. Coming next is the first of two bonus modules. Bonus module number one is two case studies of the two most recent personal crowdfunders that Adam and I have done for ourselves. We let it all hang out and we tell you of our triumphs 
and the moments of challenge and angst. You will see a lot of what to do and some of what not to do. Then we will really put it all on the line when we give you our personal cumulative recommendations about what we think works and what doesn't and why. We call it our super summary. You're going to love this module.